Speaking of abstraction, I got my most abstract coach friend, Gordon Thompson, here from St. Francis College in Pennsylvania. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Chicago. Ooh, Gordo's here. It's a really special day. Gordon's in town because uh, he has known my daughter Molly for many, many, many years, and Molly and Dimitri are getting married today. So uh, I'm jubilant. I'm happy. I'm getting ready for big celebrations, and I'm glad to be here with both Gordon and Katie to start off this edition of Live from the are Heartland. You not a, are you not a godparent? I'm not a godparent. Oh, okay. You're a godparent of another one of my yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. Young Hal. Young Hal. All right. Of the Gordo, Smith um, Western. Michael said a funny thing when we were setting up the order of today's show. By the way, also on today's show, we have Rich Kruger, who um, some people heard about a month ago and gave us big wows about his music, his rap. So we're real glad to welcome Rich back. That would we be also, Dr. Rich. Yeah, that, the doctor is in. And um, we also uh, have a really special guest today, who, and that would be our uh, newest friend, the quarterback of the women's football team here in Chicago, The Force, Sammy Grisaf, Grisafi. I'm going to have to ask her how to do that. Grisafi. She's just giving her the, the okay. That's the okay. She's Great. over there tuning up a ukulele. And yeah, That's a multi That's what every quarterback gal. needs. Exactly. And heading into a big game today with Boston. So we're really excited to have. Uh, Michael said before uh, we started about the order of things that he said, well, like when you get the newspaper and you turn it around and you go straight to sports, we're going to the sports section. Sports town, well, I, Chicago. You know, I usually go to the sports section, but after another loss to Minnesota last night, I, I might go to the, the hard news first today. <laughs> I hear you, baby. All right, well, Gordon Thompson has been around quite a while. He was a, uh, he was a steeplechaser out of uh, Delaware, went to University of Florida. Uh, he went to Northwestern as a coach. Then he went to coach Loyola for years. He had a number of All-Americans under his tutelage. He then uh, defected to DePaul. Jeez and Louise. then he went down to Clemson, and now he's at St. Francis, a wonderful little school up there in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Wow. Gordon, tell us what it's like being a track coach up there in the mountains of Pennsylvania. Rural Pennsylvania is... Uh, just like rural Wisconsin. Cows, farmlands, cornfields, soybeans, rolling topography. Hops. It's <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Hmm. Just after living 25 years here in the city of Chicago, I didn't get tired of the car alarms and the sirens, but it's nice to have solitude. I bet it is. But uh, tell me about your team. How's your team doing? And how, uh, how's the recruiting going for uh, Always. Recruiting school? is nonstop. 24-7, 365. It's just part of the life of, of well, college athletics. Just fill us in on that. What, is, what do you do as a recruiter? You get um, constant bombardment of emails, telephone calls, parents, uncles, aunts, friends, that just want you to, to just recruit their son, their daughter, their nephew. And, and uh, it's more or less just organizing and uh, are you staying. Co are you recruiting co-ed now? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. It's always men and women. You never yeah. separate, no. Okay. You know, I, um, there was a guy who used to chase me around. Uh, actually, it was Eugene Dorniker. He was on the Red Squad, and he used to chase me around. Uh, in the old it's days, not the same and later, kind of recruiting, Michael. No, but later on, he became an avid runner and a uh, participant in the Athletes United for Peace Heartland Runs, and he actually had a niece or a, a relative in Missouri who was doing pretty well in high school, and I remember trying to get Gordon to look at her. I, I gave you a tip, and I uh, looked at the information and said, "Well." It's okay, but I don't know whatever happened. He was very polite. <laughs> that didn't pan out. <laughs> and that is part of college recruiting is like 99% of all the tips, the information on, on individuals and people, they don't turn out. But it's uh, you got to follow up everything. It's part of the people's game, as you're saying. Gordo, um, you're recruiting for a track and field? Track and field. And, and cross what country. particular And cross country, which is part of track and field. It is. Well, yeah. It's in the so, fall. <laughs> When you are looking at these youngsters, are you, are you looking? You're looking at their stats, and their and their little record in their That's the easy in their 18 year old lives. So you look at their academic record, you look uh -huh. at their athletic record, and then you talk to people that know them and aren't part of the family. You want to see character record. You want right. to get influences of who they are as people. So are they going to fit or not? So you, you got to. Every team is, and Sammy will tell you, the, our star quarterback. 
every mm -hmm. team is uh, really a, a manifestation of the, the top leaders. The coach carries on the coach's personality. So you want people that are like-minded. So this is a short life of their, uh, in their athletic career, college. For you, it was four years at Mundelein. You did a great job as an academian, but I tell you what, for some, it stretches on forever. Oh. Four, five, <laughs> six, graduate seven, school. eight years. You're looking after really, yeah. When do track and field really? athletes, <laughs> when, when do track and field athletes reach their peak, uh, and what is the life expectancy of a uh, true competitor in terms of their competition? About 26 years old, you're at, male or female, you're at your absolute peak of physicality and mentality, be able to bring it all in together. That was 45 so years ago for me. Well, yeah, you're well past your peak, but you're, you're well rested since then. I gotta say, I gotta give, give you a lot of credit. But uh, yeah, at 26, so that's four years out of college. So yeah, we're not getting people at their peak, but we're getting people that are really in a stage of growth and really in a, in a it's a fantastic opportunity to be, to be in college. College is, everyone looks back to their college years and just well you were here for the lakefront invitational last fall and you brought your whole team here to the heartland which was a wonderful experience for me and i got to share some probably over the edge information with them that tip was for the waitress and you were not supposed to pocket that huge tip no i gave him another kind of tip but uh one of the things one of the th actually on AOL the other day it said the real meaning of tip and I never I didn't read it so there's some hidden inf message around the word tip but Gordon Thompson you've always impressed me with your historical knowledge of uh, of track and field you were uh, the president of the cross country track uh, cross country as coaches association uh, you've trained Olympic athletes uh, give us a little update uh, around what's going on in track and field both here and abroad uh, it's a wonderful sport it hasn't had the uh, notoriety that it probably deserves. Uh, in Europe, it's a big deal, not so much here. What's going on right now? What's going on? Well, track and field, as you said, has 30 some odd events, really 21 events. And, uh, but there's two big events that the public loves, the mile and the 100 meters. Who's the fastest? And also who is like the best tactician, the mile? We got a new hotshot American miler now, college kid out of Oregon. Matthew Centrowitz. So he's a senior in college and he's really, he's got potential to be something on the international level. Skinny is a, is a rail and uh, absolute great tactician. Loves to make the moves, a lot of fun. Well, don't you have a hot shot runner here out of Illinois too? Isn't there a kid oh, yeah. who's gotten a lot of notoriety? Absolutely. You'd love to recruit, the, but I'm sure he's going somewhere He's else. going to University of Oregon. Uh, oh, yeah. So young so man out of Sandburg. powerhouse. Oh, again. it's, it's uh, Nike, Nike, University of Nike is what So it is. what's this kid's name here from it. Illinois? Uh, his name is uh, Verbicus, and he's right out of Sandburg High School on the south side of Chicago, and he's the best di high school distance runner in the nation, hands down. But he's getting a lot of notoriety as a guy who's who's really far and above other people. I mean, it's the first time in a while someone like this has come along. What are your, what would, how would you predict this kid's career? He may win a gold medal in the Olympic Games, but not in track and field. Maybe in a triathlon. He's got a great background as a swimmer, biker, and as a, as a distance runner. So his parents are, have done a phenomenal job of uh, culturally training him and physically training and mentally training a Probably a, a future champion at the world level, triathlon. Uh, what's left for us this year in track and field? What will we be watching? We got the, the world championships coming on in uh, July. And uh, right now, the greatest athletes in the world are fine tuning their, their deal in the European track meets, but probably overshadowed by the Tour de France, which is just kicking off in its first week right now and absolutely starting to light, light it up. But isn't it uh, already tainted with questions of doping? <laughs> isn't everything. You're tainted with questions of doping. Hey. <laughs> oh, hey, you hey, said hey. it on the air? Really? Holy cow. What's going on here? Wait a minute. Okay. The Tour de France is, right now is in the first week, and it is just about to hit the mountain stages. And yeah. that's where the real separation between the sprinters, the real endurance athletes, and the mountain guys it's amazing. are... are 
these little bo- like praying mantises of a bodies, just all gangly and just huge engines to run it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, it's it tires me out just to watch that. Great on, on TV. <laughs> travel log right now on it's it, right now on the Versus channel. We have uh, yeah, but the keep your radios stage. on, folks. We've turn got... the radios on, but turn on the Tour de France. Great travel log. But all speaking of radio, you can uh, actually see our radio if you go to wlw.org. Uh, you can hear it, and if you go to uh, youtube.com/slash Heartland Media. You will see earlier editions, but actually, uh, our co-producer Dan Kugler has been working on live streams. So stay tuned for uh, the live stream version of Live from the Heartland. What we're doing right now is we've got Rich Kruger getting some kind of musical instrument set up, so we can do a musical break, and then we're going to bring up Sammy, the quarterback of the Force, and uh, she will come up along with her ukulele and. Uh, we will definitely, we're going to talk right. about the yeah. shoes. We'll, so we got a lot of action to follow. Gordon, while we're getting the music set up, yeah. let me ask you the question that is uh, being yelled out from the packed audience here. <laughs> they want to know about these new spongy shoes, the ones where people got rubber, they got rubber feet with their rubber covers on their toes. Yeah, what's up and with I, those I tell shoes? you, the first person I ever saw was at the McGaw Y wearing this, and she was like an outstanding kind of gymnast. She was doing all these handstands and yoga positions. And I Lips. said, look at those feet. It's like, where did they were purple and they just looked like her regular feet. They had wiggly toes, the whole deal. Let Tell us about it. it. There is a new movement in shoes, which is called a minimalist movement of instead of creating all the big support of a huge arch underneath the, the foot and all this padding is to do the reverse in shoes is to go to a bare minimum of padding with no support, very little support, so the muscles in your feet get built up over time through repetitive use. But the most interesting aspect of the minimalist movement is these Vibrams. That's the trademark of the five-fingered toe toe shoes, where each individual toe is wrapped like a glove. And that is a, a really fantastic new movement because when you have each individual toe wrapped, each one's got to work independently. And I tell you, after using uh, a pair of these glove shoes yes. for a little bit, you feel like you got monkey type claws of feet, like uh, bear claws, where you're working everything. So you have a pair? I do have a pair. <laughs> I, I broke down. I, I resisted, but I, I broke down. Can you just wear them walking around the streets? You look like a <laughs> jerk. <laughs> You, you, I mean, people look at you strange, and you wonder, it's like, okay, I don't want to be stared at. I want to know what like colors they come in. They but wait come a minute. In everything you want. Concrete, anyone? Yeah. Concrete. Yeah, concrete. What's, what's the deal well, with Well, you know, there are runners. Minimalist. There are some famed races Gordon can tell us about if people ran in their bare feet oh, I, in the I Olympics. Oh, I understand that. And I, I once left my shoes at home when I was back running marathons and ran for an hour and a half in my stocking feet on the Lincoln Belmont little go around to oh, prepare for a there. marathon. Yes. That was 32 times around for a mile. 28. And, and you hurt it for weeks well, afterwards. No, I didn't hurt but at all. But the track was only 12 and a half times for a mile. Well, there you go. In the alumni gym, which Jeez is coming Louise. down. Okay. Actually, what is We're, happening with alumni gym? They're tearing it down? I know you keep posting Maybe we can ask Jonathan Fine when he, if he shows up about the preservation of it. There's no preservation. No, I know. It's Travis Clicka, God love you. Bring right, it down. We, we are, you are listening to Live from the Heartland on WLUW 88.7, <laughs> Chicago Sound Alliance.